see that Stephen Apolita's guy is a deception artist, and you can see that in the way he do, he he will not ever do anything that's practical. He doesn't do anything practical. His sole purpose is to try to make people look bad, look stupid, look crazy. Nothing he does is fair. He'll sit there and make all sorts of crazy videos about me, plagiarize all my material, identity theft all my stuff. You know, like I said, who, who even knows if he's from England? He can't even show his own face on his own YouTube channel. And the thing about it is, is somebody's paying him to make these YouTube videos about me, and it's somebody, I think, within the area that I live at. Because he does, he does the, the, all the images he shows is mimicking, mimicking stuff. Where did he get the police reports? He got some old police report about me <coughs> when I was 17. Then, when I was framed, he got the police report a suit right away. And in the police report, he even says gang stalking conspiracy. Then, he was on YouTube, uh, before all this even happened, before I was framed, he was on YouTube talking about I was getting social security checks, but he said I was a paranoid schizophrenic. I was never diagnosed for paranoid schizophrenia. And how did he know I, at one time I was getting social security checks? So it's very obvious that he's working with so, some, some informants, some federal informants, or some police officers, and they're using him on YouTube to talk bad about Kerry Cassidy from Project Camelot. They were using him to talk bad about George Maxwell on there. Uh, this guy obviously is a fraud who's been a... This guy obviously is a fraud. And, you know, the whole thing about it is, is, is why would they put him in the M Live ad? And I noticed in the M Live ad, they tried to make Jeffrey Willis look as bad as possible. Jeffrey Willis's case with the Exxon Mobil gas station was very interesting to me because in May of 2016, when I came out with my beat gang stalking uh, videos I started putting up, when I came out with my beat gang stalking videos I started putting up, the, uh, the, the, the police, the cops came and arrested Jeffrey Willis. Okay? But they said he kidnapped a girl in April of 2016. So then in May of 2016, they arrested him for it, for allegedly trying to kidnap a 16-year-old girl. But the whole thing about the whole thing about it was, that's the same month I started talking about the beat gang stalking stuff on YouTube. Before that, I was just doing regular conspiracy research. Up until that point, I had me getting gang stalked for a year. So I said, I'm going to present some beat gang stalking research. And so that's what I did. Jeffrey Willis got arrested that same month. As soon as he got arrested, right after he got arrested, he went to jail. And the first person he called was a North Shores police officer right so that to me stuck out like why is he so involved with the, why would jeffrey willis being so involved with the cops and what's the obsoletus's connection to the cops to have all these police reports and all of that <laughs> see what i'm saying then a month after uh, jeffrey right after jeffrey willis was arrested i ended up getting framed and arrested in august 2016 and oh let me go back okay so he got arrested in may of 2016 then right after that, he got charged with the murder of Rebecca Bletch, right, which happened in North Muskegon. Then in August 2016, I get arrested and framed, and then Jeffrey Willis got charged with the Jessica, Jessica Herriga case in September of 2016. And so I'm looking at it like there is definitely a connection between the people who framed me and contract stalked at me and what's, what happened to Jeffrey Willis. Now, I'm not really familiar with the Rebecca Bletch case, I just started looking at this stuff a while back, but I'm looking at the Herringa case, and they were talking about, the, I was looking at the, the secret phone connection that the drug enforcement agency never investigated about the dope dealing at the Exxon Mobil gas station, and there was no cameras there. Uh, I was looking at, I was looking into the people who were contract stalking, stalking me, and I was able to find out some of these individuals had connections to the Lakeside Veterans Club, and there's a veteran, there's a foreign veterans club right next, next to Exxon Mobil gas station. So I was looking at all this stuff like, what is going on in Muskegon County? And the Stephen Ops Lee's guy like stays on M Live. He's on M Live and he's from England, or he's supposedly from England. And he contacted me in mid of 2015 to do interviews with me. I didn't even know who the bum was. And so, he, but he's in the M Live ad. He's in England. My civil rights are being violated in M Live. And he's in England. He's a foreigner. And so I'm like, you know, what the fuck? And then I started looking at this Jeffrey Willis stuff, 
And the way they depicted Jeffrey Willis on M Live was like how they de were depicting me. Like, the if you look at the thumbnail pictures of Jeffrey Willis from M Live, you know it looks like he's crazy. But if you really listen to Jeffrey Willis talk, he, you know, he's he's articulate. Jeffrey Willis can stand up for himself and hold an intelligent conversation. When he was being sentenced, I listened to, in the DJ Hilson's court in Muskegon County. I was listening to Jeffrey Willis speak. He was reading a speech. And he's very articulate. He's well spoken. Jeffrey Willis isn't, isn't uh, unintelligible when he speaks. He can hold an intelligent conversation. And I was looking at M Live, and they were, they were depicting him to be stupid or and crazy and silly and ignorant. And a lot of people in the public saw that, and they had a lot of disdain for him. But if you listen to what how he speaks, you know, regardless of what you, your opinion is on the case, if you listen to how he speaks. He isn't, he isn't, he isn't, uh, ignorant. And so that's the way they depicted me. How the, I, I, the day I showed up for court, my bond was revoked because I was speaking my, my mind with my, which is my constitutional right in the United States of America on the internet. And also uh, my bond got revoked the first day I showed up for, I showed up for court for my two day trial where I was framed at. And, uh, as soon as I, sh my bond revoked, I had to go sleep in the holding tank, so I show up, so my mugshot picture is used, and my hair's all frizzy and stuff, so I try to, like, do some sort of Charles Manson thing and make me look crazy, and then nothing's right in the newspaper. They got the ops police in the newspaper, and they're saying it's a younger female daughter, and then they're saying, and then, and the police report is a 29-year-old woman, in reality, it was, it, it, I mean, in the police report is a 29-year-old woman, then in reality, it was a 21-year-old woman I sent the flowers to that lived at the house, and the woman in the, in the, uh, police report, uh, the woman in the police report, Amanda Cherry, never lived at the house. She didn't even live in Norton Shores. So I was sitting there like, what the f You know, like, what is going on? Like, these people, like, like, I'm looking at it like the people who are contract stalking me, I'm looking at it like some of these individuals I feel were involved with that justice. So something's going on. There's a connection to that ExxonMobil gas station. And was Jeffrey Willis framed for, for the ExxonMobil gas station thing. He could have killed Rebecca Bletch. I'm not saying he didn't murder Rebecca Bletch. He could have did it. I don't know that much about Bletch's case. But, and then Jeffrey Willis was talking about how they were switching evidence in the lockers. I mean, there's something crazy. Like, they switched people in police reports. Then they switched prosecutors. In the, in the, like, they were switching people in the police reports on my stuff. Then they even switched the prosecutors. And the courtroom is Benjamin Lee Medema. And in, in the in the newspaper article, it's Timothy Matt, and then the woman in the courtroom, uh, the 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 woman in the courtroom, I didn't even know who she was, and then I show up, I show up for court, I show up for court, and the whole tripped out thing about it, my jury it, it watches my channel, they would remember when I showed up for court, the 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 judges, uh, the the court the the court uh, record report the court. The courtroom recorder, the courtroom reporter, the typist, she was wearing red. And then the secretary that came into court with the detective, the, the detective near from Northern Shores, his, his secretary or whoever she was to him, his clerk, she was wearing red. And I had been on YouTube for, for, for months talking about how I was getting followed around with people. I just think, like, that's too much of a coincidence. You know what I mean? Like, this stuff was definitely, you know, like, I wish the people could, I wish somebody could put my uh, trial footage on YouTube. You know, they put Jeffrey Willis's trial footage on YouTube, put my trial footage on YouTube. So, so, you know, there's something definitely going on, you know, and this op Stephen Obsolita's guy, he's some sort of fruitcake covert paranoid schizophrenic mentally deranged freak from England agent back by Muskegon County and he just sits there and 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 runs his he said he called silent observer on me and then the whole thing about it was is I know he didn't even call silent observer but that means he's an informed you know, informant from England and America you know like what the fuck and then he said he called silent observer but the whole timeline's off and that's an indication of how I was framed how he said, uh, I was arrested, okay, I was arrested in August 2016, 
But being arrested in August 2016, he said I tried to pull the girl woman on the car, Amanda Cherry. I didn't even know who she was. I never even seen her in my lifetime. I went to the trial. But then the police are saying I tried to pull her out of the car in late 2015 or early 2016. Then I sent the flowers. Then I made YouTube videos. And the woman never even lived in the neighborhood. I never even seen her before. And and uh, so Stephen Ops police guy say I tried to pull her out of the car in the summer of 2016. I never said anything about pulling any woman out of a car. He's getting this out of me on YouTube, making a YouTube video, talk, speaking my mind, which is my constitutional right about pulling a man out of a car who is following me around and stalking me. Okay, so this whole the whole case is a fraud. Then the whole thing about the evidence, the par the the evidence, I think, what was foolish because they said I sent the flood. Okay. I was never in any female's yard. I sent the flowers to a floral company. It's a floral company that is right around the corner for me. And the people who lived at the house, the man of the house, right, which the guy said in the police report, it's, it's, it's Joe Pastuca, Joseph Pastuca. That's what the police report said at Norton Shores. They said that's who the man is who lives there. So they said he answered the door. and he, I mean, he answered, the, according to the floral company, I sent the flowers and I watched them deliver it to the house. And the man of the house accepted the flowers. They're supposed to be for the oldest daughter living in the house right but the police never took any statement from the floral company and they just took pictures from the family and it was used as submitted evidence for the prosecution the police didn't take any pictures any flowers to begin with so the whole thing about the evidence i think was a sham to begin with and you know if i got did like if i got did like that in a courtroom over something i didn't even fucking do I can imagine what can happen to Jeffrey Willis if there's some corruption going on and dope dealing with contract stalkers and stuff. I can imagine what they would do to Jeffrey Willis over a kidnapping. My God. If they did all that to me over, over something I didn't even do, imagine what the hell they would do to somebody for, over a murder that they didn't do. My God.